This footage originates from security cameras placed in a Starbucks. In the video, an individual wearing a ski mask and clad in black forcibly entered the premises during the nocturnal hours. The intruder proceeded to empty a container of gasoline throughout the interior before igniting it and departing the scene. Subsequently, police successfully apprehended the individual, who later confessed to perpetrating five additional acts of arson at various other establishments, including Old Navy. In the process of reaching a plea agreement, the individual also admitted to involvement in an additional nine arson incidents. Over the span of 10 consecutive nights, the motivation behind these scenes remains unclear. Nevertheless, the capture of the perpetrator by the police proved instrumental in averting further potential harm and damage. The rapidity and extent of the destruction caused by this individual underscored the genuine threat they posed to society had they not been apprehended. Bama Yao, located in Guangxi Province, China, is renowned for its extraordinary longevity, boasting some of the world's oldest residents many of whom have reached the impressive age of 110 years or more. This has made Bama Yao the subject of numerous global studies on gerontology. On July 10, 2022, a colossal landslide occurred in Bama Yao, posing a significant threat to the region's existence. While landslides are not uncommon in China, especially in this area, this particular event seems to have been exceptionally severe. Unfortunately, specific details regarding the extent of the damage caused by the landslide are scarce. What is known is that prolonged heavy rainfall had weakened the soil, ultimately triggering this devastating incident. Initial observations indicate that several vehicles were completely destroyed, and numerous businesses suffered extensive damage. Drone footage vividly illustrates the magnitude of the disaster showcasing the vast amount of earth and debris that tumbled down the mountainside, completely burying the road. The cleanup effort appears to be a monumental task, likely necessitating the use of multiple dump trucks to remove the debris and restore normalcy to the area. Imagine encountering a wheelchair autonomously gliding through an eerie, dimly lit hospital at night. Such a sight could easily conjure thoughts of stepping into a scene from a horror film. This was likely the unsettling impression that the hospital's security personnel experienced when they scrutinized the surveillance footage following a mischievous encounter with an otherworldly presence. The footage captures a wheelchair initially stationed adjacent to a hallway wall, but eerily, it commences a deliberate backwards journey devoid of any visible human agency. Neither a pusher nor an occupant is in sight, leaving one to ponder who or what is orchestrating this enigmatic movement and to what destination it is bound. The answers, it seems, lie concealed in the spectral realm of this haunting hospital. Although the police recently released static images derived from video surveillance footage, these images provide a glimpse into a perplexing case. On June 17, 2019, Mackenzie Lewick, a 23-year-old native of California, arrived at Salt Lake City International Airport in Utah, where she was scheduled to commence her college semester. However, her parents' anxiety grew when they received no communication from her after her flight landed, and this silence persisted for several days. Mackenzie missed all attempts to reach her and failed to appear for a crucial final exam prompting her concerned parents to report her missing. The ensuing investigation promptly uncovered CCTV footage capturing her movements after disembarking from her flight. While drawing definitive conclusions from these photographs would be premature, observations suggest that McKenzie wandered aimlessly around the airport, seemingly awaiting someone. Subsequently, investigators determined that she had taken a lift ride from the airport to Hatch Park. The driver underwent interrogation as a potential suspect, but was later released upon verification of his alibi. He reported that McKenzie appeared in good spirits and casually mentioned meeting someone at the park. It was subsequently revealed that she had been in contact with a 31-year-old individual named Ayola Ajayi, 
whom she had met online before this encounter. Mobile phone data proved that they were both present at the park simultaneously. A warrant enabled investigators to search Ajiya's property. In July 2019, they discovered charred remains and personal items belonging to Luwik in his backyard. Consequently, Ajiya was arrested as a primary person of interest. An anonymous contractor came forward post Ajiya's arrest, stating that Ajiya had requested the construction of a soundproof room in April, with specific features including concrete walls with embedded hooks and a fingerprint lock. However, the room was never constructed. Presently, an ongoing investigation has yielded minimal updates, and the Lyft driver stands as the last confirmed witness to have encountered Mackenzie. This video begins with an intense scene, as a grizzly bear finds itself pursued by two determined dogs belonging to the man. These fearless dogs persistently chase after the bear, seemingly with the goal of protecting their owner. Interestingly, the bear appears rather uninterested in engaging with the dogs. Eventually, the chase reaches a point where the bear decides that a strategic retreat into the woods is the wisest course of action. It's a powerful reminder of the special bond between humans and their faithful canine companions. On TikTok, a user named Sid and the Plastics recently shared a spine-tingling video from their road trip through a densely wooded area in North America. In the video, a woman is seen lying by the roadside, eliciting a range of reactions from the audience. What the f Stop. No, Stop. I'm not. I'm not. No. Hell no. What the f dude? Oh. They were soaked. Rather than stopping, the driver opts to turn the car around for a closer look. Bro, what the f See? That was it! That was it! She's crying. The clip then transitions to the following morning when the group returns to investigate. Yep, she had to have come up out of the water. Yep, there's a dig spot there. They find a damp spot and footprints in the gravel, leading them to speculate that the woman may have crawled from the nearby river. So she came up from down there. That's had to have been why she was so wet. This was the spot that she had left. I don't know why or what was going on. Many viewers commended the driver for defying horror movie cliches by not stopping in the middle of the night to investigate the eerie scene. Because we all know what happens when you do that. Some suggest that it might have been a potential trap set by assailants lurking in the woods, intending to harm the travelers. However, others argue that the group should have contacted the police or an ambulance to assist the woman, sparking a debate about the appropriate course of action in such unusual situations. This unsettling footage leaves viewers with a mysterious puzzle, wondering what truly transpired during that wooded road trip and whether the group made the correct choice. So please share your thoughts. Would you have stopped to offer assistance or continue driving? Share your opinions in the comments below. Two individuals sought in connection with the home invasion that occurred in July have been apprehended by the police. You might recall the surveillance footage capturing the suspects as they tampered with a security camera by placing tape over it at a luxury residence situated on Warren Street. According to investigators, a confrontation ensued between the two brothers residing in the house and the intruders, resulting in the discharge of a firearm. Currently, the police are actively pursuing a third suspect who remains at large. This carjacking turned kidnapping is a convoluted and perplexing sequence of events with an unclear starting and ending point. It unfolded in front of third-party witnesses who documented it on Snapchat, depicting police officers frantically navigating through traffic in a high-speed pursuit spanning over 60 miles, crossing multiple counties. They're still coming! During the pursuit, the kidnapper fired shots at the pursuing officers, 
while miraculously not harming the kidnapped woman, but undoubtedly leaving the police shaken. The individual recording the incident appears to be trembling as they pass by the police vehicles, but still capture most of the unfolding drama with relative clarity, ultimately providing a record of the dramatic chase as it drew to a close. What the camera captured in this footage was probably quite unexpected. Deep within the ocean's abyss, it appears to be a camera designed for scientific exploration and the pursuit of new discoveries. It observes various marine creatures before zooming in on an object in the distance. Whether this occurrence has a straightforward explanation, has been rendered eerie by its unidentifiable appearance, or potentially represents a cryptid from the deep depths, it strangely resembles the ninja-like figures seen in previous clips, a disconcerting presence lurking in the depths of the Arctic Ocean. As if one needed any more reason to steer clear of the profound ocean depths, this enigmatic creature, with its piercing gaze, may be awaiting those who dare to venture down there as well. The YouTube team known as Zona Paranormal Veracruz had a spine-chilling encounter with sorcerers in a desolate ghost town. While exploring the area around a particular building, they were startled by a distant scream. Están adentro, güey. Ay, güey. Vente, vente, vente adentro, güey. Acá adentro, acá adentro. They carefully scanned the vicinity, but found nothing, only to encounter another presence shortly after. Ay, Despite their efforts, they couldn't spot anyone until they stumbled upon an individual who seemed to be igniting fires. Hola! Abi, vente! Ay, uy! Ay, 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 vive! Hola! Uy! To their astonishment, it seemed as if this enigmatic figure was hurling flames in their direction. As they cautiously approached, the figure mysteriously vanished, determined to uncover the truth. Mira, 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 güey, cómo saca fuego. Buenas noches. Ay, ay, güey. ¿Qué es eso, güey? The team searched inside a large warehouse and eventually located the figure once more. ¿Quién eres? Yet again, the figure eluded their grasp. Güey, es una sombra, una persona. ¿Quién eres? Hey. The question remains, what are these sorcerers or team of sorcerers doing in this eerie place? And what are their intentions? The answer remains shrouded in mystery, but it's clear that this ghost town holds secrets yet to be unveiled. While driving through their neighborhood, this family encountered a black bear that appears entirely unperturbed by the sudden influx of attention. The bear seems to be on a quest, showing complete disinterest in the numerous onlookers who stop to observe and record its actions. He's just walking around. That would be scary. Yeah, yes. Eventually, the bear approaches a specific car, leading the family to anticipate an unpredictable turn of events. What unfolds next is a calculated and intelligent action on the bear's part. Kind of her. Oh. <laughs> oh my god! However, the bear doesn't find what it's searching for, prompting it to move on to another vehicle. Thankfully, a kind-hearted individual steps in to scare the bear away, ensuring the safety of the bystanders. He's like, nope. <laughs> uh, that's funny. That is hilarious. It's just another ordinary day in America, it seems. The primary concern of a gas station is the risk of fire, 
And while gas station proprietors and managers can implement safety measures to prevent fires, they can never fully anticipate customer error. Pay close attention to the innocent woman attempting to refuel her vehicle. On the opposite side of her pump, a man had completed his transaction and was preparing to leave when he suddenly reversed into the gas pump. The situation reached its peak of danger because there were three occupants in the woman's vehicle, including a man and two children. As the woman swiftly moved out of the path of the approaching pump, her immediate priority became the safety of her passengers. She promptly opened the rear doors and retrieved one child, while the man secured the other. By this time, the fire had already ignited. It is commendable that no one attempted to be a hero. Safety took precedence. This safety-first approach is one that everyone can support, and as a result, everyone escaped from the vicinity of the fire, ensuring the entire area was free from imminent danger. As time passed, the fire continued to consume everything in its path, with each moment intensifying as thick smoke billowed into the sky. The flames extended beyond the gas pump to adjacent vehicles, and soon all that was visible was a conflagration enveloped in smoke. By the conclusion of the video, an inferno had taken over, but we can be grateful that everyone had evacuated before the situation became catastrophic. At Ranthambore National Park, a group of tourists experienced a rather unexpected twist in their day when they encountered a male tiger simply going about its business. The video begins as they retrieve their cameras upon noticing the predator emerging from the forest. That's much bigger than mine. He's my pig. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Can you see the big tiger? He will sit here. As everyone aboard the vehicle remains completely silent, captivated by the sight before them, the tiger calmly proceeds towards a nearby stream, where it quenches its thirst and indulges in a brief bath. Regrettably, the situation takes a tense turn. When the tiger eventually started moving towards the road where the concerned tourists were situated, With the tourists in the vehicle ahead growing increasingly anxious for their safety, fortunately, the tiger decides to retreat back to the forest, relieving their apprehension. GoPro cameras serve purposes beyond recreational activities, finding applications in militaries worldwide for monitoring training exercises and documenting perilous military operations. On occasion, GoPros capture quite harrowing footage such as the instance where a Marine remains unharmed by a sniper's bullet. Uh -oh. You got cover out there? Oh, shit. Hey, we got a sniper! Dude, you got shot. I did get shot. I saw it hit your Kevlar. I got fucking... What the f***? Am I good? My ears are fucking. Oh my god. <sighs> Lucky son of a bitch. Look at that. What the fuck, dude? You alright? Yeah. My ears are ringing. Break, break, break. My teammate just got shot in the helmet. He's good. He's good, but we believe there's a sniper. Hey, what is that? That's the south side. Roger, Charlie, stop. You guys clear to start down. Dude. That's through. All right, let's let's get out of here and do something about this. Come on. On July seventh, twenty twenty-three, an unexpected gust of wind swept through a sheep farm located in Tong Liao. Lacking any forewarning, the shepherds were left with no choice but to watch anxiously, hoping their sheep remained unharmed.
Captured from a different perspective, cameras recorded the roof's detachment in slow motion. It appears to execute a nearly perfect backflip before being carried away by the force of the wind, its destination unknown. The shepherds reported that their farm, housing over 400 sheep valued at approximately 500,000 yuan, remained intact during the storm. And fortunately, it appears that none of the animals suffered any injuries as a result of the weather event. This toy is designed to perform the alphabet song, but as per the description, it surprises kids with a deep voice instead. Even if this anomaly occurs due to low battery levels, what makes it particularly peculiar is its timing. Strangely, this toy consistently malfunctions right before reaching the final letter of the alphabet. Take a moment to listen to this segment and let me know if you detect a deep voice uttering something resembling, hey. This video opens with a tense situation, as a bear makes a concerted effort to reach a man seated in the driving seat of his excavator. Misha, Misha, привет! Oh! Misha, куда ты, куда ты лезешь, дорогой? Surprisingly, the man appears remarkably calm throughout the encounter, possibly confident that the bear can't reach him. Misha. Oh. However, the bear exhibits strong signs of hunger, displaying agitation and persistent attempts to approach the man. It briefly retreats to explore alternative angles of approach, but eventually concedes defeat, disappearing into the distance. <laughs> This instance serves as a valuable reminder. It's a wise precaution to have access to a large construction vehicle in case of an unexpected encounter with a bear. In this video clip, it seems that a Starbucks employee is creating a playful video alongside her friend. Would you like to order? Can I get an ice caramel? They are positioned outdoors during a storm playfully mimicking the person behind the camera who is pretending to place orders. The two girls share laughter and engage in lighthearted banter when, out of nowhere, a nearby lightning strike illuminates the scene. <laughs> Startled by the sudden brightness and the proximity of the lightning, both girls let out a scream and the video abruptly ends. Which horror movie is currently being screened at the Haunted Indiana Theater? The YouTube team known as Tommy Against the Tombstones is on a mission to investigate the historic Fowler Theater, a place notorious for numerous accounts of disembodied voices and unexplained activity captured by security cameras. Among the rumored hotspots of paranormal activity is the theater's restroom, and as they venture inside, they are soon greeted by peculiar noises, including a recurring knock. What? In other haunted sections of the theater, their paranormal devices go haywire, responding to their inquiries. Can you give us a sign that you're up here still? Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. <laughs> the spirit, it seems, is cooperative in answering their questions and shows no sign of impatience during the interrogation. Did you used to work here? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, you did. Thank you. Thank you so much. Where the projection is? That's how you say that? I think that's how you say it. Projectionist? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Wow. Later, as they make their way through the theater room, 
they witness an unusual anomaly hovering above their heads as they enter one of the rows. The question arises, could this be the spirit of a former theater worker or patron? Given the myriad phenomena occurring in this theater, doubting its authenticity would be a challenge, in my opinion. What personally unsettles me the most about urban exploration videos isn't the prospect of encountering ghosts, hauntings, or anything supernatural. Rather, it's the unsettling notion of peculiar, real-life individuals potentially lurking within the dimly lit, abandoned structures. In a specific case featured on the YouTube channel The Proper People, they embark on an exploration of an abandoned insane asylum. This antiquated institution was situated in an isolated location, accessible only via a desolate, unmarked road deep within the woods. Initially, their exploration was eerie but relatively uneventful, as they ventured from room to room, meticulously documenting the asylum's deteriorating state. However, an unsettling moment arises when one of the urban explorers peers out of a broken window, aiming to capture footage of an external staircase. Look at this staircase out here. Oh, there's somebody there. Yes, yes, see their light. They're out there. I swear on my life. Right there. To their alarm, they spot a disconcerting sight. Should I say hello? Yeah. An individual seemingly using a cell phone wandering just outside the building. There's somebody out there. Let's go back to the car. This way. Did yeah. somebody wanted to talk to us? Let's go to the car now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's go to the car. It looks like a cell phone, right? Like a cell phone light, yeah. It's worth noting that this asylum was situated in a remote area with no other vehicles in sight and no apparent reason for anyone else to be present. Fearing the unknown, the explorers promptly decided to depart. Should we just bail? I don't know. Let's see who it is. There's no other car here. He was around this side. That was 100% That person. was a person. But he had a phone. Why is there a person here? Like, what the f We can't keep exploring this place if there's like some random person out there that we don't know what they're doing. Once outside, they call out to the person in the darkness, but no one responds. Where? You saw a light? Hello? I don't like it. Let's go. Yeah, the, the fact that they're not answering back. Let's get out of here. It's too sketchy. Like, yeah. they could be wanting to, like, yeah. rob us. Yeah. They hastily retreat down the dark, unpaved trail in their vehicle, leaving behind the eerie encounter. This video largely speaks for itself. The woman behind the camera captures an intriguing occurrence within Okanagan Lake that has piqued people's interest. What is that though? That's not a whale. The person who originally posted the video, Stacy Hamill, maintains a steady hand as she records a discernible presence moving through the lake's waters. It's moving. Mm -hmm. Come stand over here closer. Get closer to it. I'm videotaping it though. Some suggest it could be Ogopogo, a creature featured in Canadian folklore which is often described as a living dinosaur, resembling a Pleosaurus or a Basilosaurus. This legend bears similarities to Scottish folklore surrounding the Loch Ness Monster, a serpentine creature supposedly inhabiting Loch Ness in the Scottish Highlands. That's not a wave. There's no way that's a wave. The way it's moving? It looks like a snake. However, it's essential to note that the woman's footage only provides a vague outline of the alleged creature. It can't be waves, though. No. There's nothing. That boat was over here. While the video is compelling, it ultimately leaves a great deal to the imagination.
There appears to be a recurring pattern among NFL players when it comes to their reluctance to comply with police instructions, as exemplified by the recent incident involving Baltimore Ravens wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. just a few months after Marshall Lynch's arrest. Beckham was removed from an American Airlines flight on November 27, 2022, while traveling from Miami to Los Angeles, reportedly due to his refusal to fasten his seatbelt. The incident unfolded when police entered the airplane jet bridge to board the plane, where they were informed by security officers and flight attendants that an intoxicated male passenger, Beckham, was repeatedly losing consciousness and disregarding seatbelt and instructions. So I understand that that one passenger, he, is very, he needs to get off, right? Yeah. Severely really intoxicated, belligerent? No, he just that he was unresponsive prior to push. He seemed okay, then after when they pushed, they tried to get him to put his seatbelt on, but he was still passed out. Concerned for everyone's safety, the police deplaned the passengers and spoke with airline officials in the first class area. How you doing, man? How you doing? Can I speak to you for a second? Yeah, yeah. yeah listen. Yeah. How you doing, man? Rene Garcia, Sergeant with Miami-Dade Police Department. Nice to meet you. Body camera footage from airport police capture the initial interactions between Beckham and the flight crew. A flight attendant described Beckham as appearing drunk and unresponsive. Beckham was awakened from his slumber in the business class cubicle and questioning began. There was confusion about Beckham's condition, but the crew had the authority to decide who could fly, leading them to contact Miami police. The crew at this time don't feel comfortable with him flying because they're not sure what's going on with him. So I just kindly asked him to just go ahead and be plane and I'll put him on the next flight, which actually leaves an hour and a half from now. Okay. But now he's being belligerent and non-compliant to the one that out, so. They informed the responding police that no one felt comfortable with Beckham on the flight. Correct. Okay, All right, so that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to deplane everybody. Once we have everybody deplane, then we'll be with him. Uh, and hopefully he'll, he'll get off yeah. peacefully. If not, then yeah. let's go. Let's go. Okay. When instructed by both crew members and airplane police to disembark, Beckham became belligerent and refused. Just listen, listen what's going to happen, brother. And just, I, don't, I want to avoid any embarrassments or any issues. The crew, the, the captain's the one that makes the final decision. Right now, for whatever reason, they're asking you to leave. They're going to rebook you on the next flight. I don't want it. Okay, well, this is what's going to happen. As soon as they get off, you can do whatever you got to do. We're going to have to, we're going to have to deplane everybody on this plane, and then you're still going to get off. The police reiterated that the final decision rested with the flight crew. Beckham explained that he had never encountered such a situation before and wished to avoid unnecessary embarrassment. As the other passengers began to deplane, Beckham became confrontational with some of them, vehemently stating that he would never leave the plane in response to insults. I would never, ever in my life get off the plane from you, specifically you. Maybe everybody else. I would get off the plane. This shit don't mean nothing to me. Ain't no way you could look at me. Yeah. Ever. 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 Guys, just don't just don't engage with them. Just, just don't no. engage. Just like, quick, go again. You, you gonna wait 40 to minutes? Out, and I'm gonna be on a private yeah. plane home. Good. Yeah. Get your fat ass. Yeah, I will. Get your ass off the plane for a second. Yeah, I bet. Enjoy the cheese board on the way home. Get your ugly ass. After a lengthy deboarding process, the police assisted Beckham off the plane, allowing him to retrieve his luggage and escorting him through the terminal without incident or arrest. And hey, we got everybody off. Okay. Don't forget your stuff up here. Some passengers applauded his removal. Notably, the officers were aware of Beckham's identity leading to accusations of special treatment. Despite the body camera footage, it remains unclear whether Beckham had committed any significant wrongdoing. However, his lack of remorse and refusal to comply with the initial request to leave the plane seemed to be his downfall. He could have spared himself undue embarrassment had he complied with the request. In contrast, Arizona Cardinals linebacker Zavin Collins provides a contrasting example from which Beckham could learn.
A chilling and distressing video captures a truly harrowing scene where individuals found themselves immersed in a swimming pool. This gripping footage serves as a stark testament to the extreme and perilous conditions faced by these individuals as they sought refuge in the pool amid the encroaching flames and billowing smoke. In the midst of the raging inferno, the pool offered a fragile sanctuary, with the brave souls within grappling with the unrelenting intensity of the Maui fires that raged ominously on all sides. Rumors suggest that a Wendigo or Skinwalker inhabits Dagger Woods. In response, YouTuber Lamar Menz, accompanied by his partner Chelsea, embark on an investigative journey into the heart of the woods. This is going to be an adventure and a half. Whoa, 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 whoa! What? Hello? Do you see something dark? Something was just by that tree. Right there. That far tree. As they venture deeper into the darkness, they suddenly spot something peculiar. Their attention is drawn to a branch with a snapped limb. It's a weird vibe in the air. I keep like seeing, like thinking I'm seeing like shadows and stuff. But it's hard to tell, like forests play tricks on you. Especially when you're this deep. And as they closely examine it, their microphone experiences technical issues. Continuing their exploration, they are met with the ominous sounds of an unknown creature. Oh, oh. Go, go, back, back. Good. I gotta get over there. Suddenly, it appears that this mysterious entity confronts them. Chelsea, that rock just got flown over the trees! That rock just got thrown! In a bid to uncover more details, Lamar takes a closer look, and a significant event unfolds. Something's right there. Get up. Although the specifics of what they encountered in the darkness remain unclear, some viewers speculate in the comments that it might be Bigfoot. To arrive at a definitive conclusion, more footage would be necessary. However, after witnessing these events, it appears unlikely that this team is prepared to return any time soon. Ankong, situated in Shaanxi Province, China, is a city at a prefecture level. It is believed that the settlement's origins can be traced back to the Stone Age, with a recorded history spanning over 3,000 years. Positioned between two mountain ranges, the Daba and the That, the area is prone to frequent heavy rainfall and landslides. In early September of 2021, several consecutive days of intense rain led to a catastrophic landslide that engulfed a mountain tunnel. Fortunately, there were no vehicles passing through the tunnel at the time. As you observe the trees slowly encroaching over the tunnel's roof, it resembles a colossal mountain creature awakening from a millennium-long slumber. The outer wall succumbs to the force, causing the CCTV camera to shift. In a matter of seconds, the entire tunnel is overwhelmed by a deluge of rocks, soil, and trees. Subsequent footage suggests that efforts are being made to clear the debris, although it remains uncertain whether the collapse was limited to the tunnel entrance or extends into the interior. According to the reports, the tunnel had been blocked off before the landslide occurred, possibly thanks to the vigilance of local geologists, who may have averted a potentially disastrous situation. This incident is one of the home invasions documented in police records that I obtained through the I-Team. It involves an elderly couple, an 80-year-old man and his 69-year-old wife, who were taking care of their two grandchildren when robbers broke into their home by entering through their second-floor window. These criminals held the couple at gunpoint for a terrifying 40 minutes, causing immense fear and distress. One man was downstairs with my parents, uh, you know, keeping an eye on them, while the other one was upstairs trying to get into our safe, ransacking, you know, our closet, 
our bedrooms, looking for valuables. During the invasion, the robbers stole $10,000 worth of cash and jewelry from the family. During this time, my mom was trying to rush them out of the house by saying, hey, you know, someone's going to be home soon. My son-in-law is going to be home from work soon, so we need to hurry up and get what you need. You know, she offered them cash and say, hey, if what you're looking for is cash, here's cash, but just take it. Please don't hurt any of us. This family has unfortunately experienced three other attempted home invasions in the past, prompting them to take various security precautions, including installing a fence, security cameras, and owning a German Shepherd, now 11 years old. However, even with these measures in place, the dog was unable to deter the criminals during this recent incident. Officials here at the Oakland Police Department will not provide anybody to talk on camera about these issues, saying they're part of an ongoing investigation. But privately, sources tell me they are upset about this crime spree continuing and they want the story told. Officials at the Oakland Police Department declined to provide any on-camera statements regarding the incidents, citing an ongoing investigation. However, confidential sources have informed me that they are deeply concerned about the ongoing trend of these crimes and want the public to be aware of the situation. I was provided with an internal advisory that indicates the Oakland Police Department has been dealing with a series of approximately 50 robberies, classified as first-degree robberies, with a focus on targeting Asian households, particularly elderly couples living in the Oakland Hills area. Additionally, I have seen internal police memos that detail each of these incidents, with investigators suspecting that they are all connected and carried out by the same small group of criminals. One resident, who works as a cinematographer, recounts his own terrifying experience when his front door was forcefully pushed open two weeks ago around 4 a.m. He shared that one of the robbers pursued him with a knife, and he had to barricade the bedroom door while his wife called 911. I mean, it was very loud. It was like an explosion. We thought, I don't know, something crazy happened or on the street, but it was coming from inside the house. They were overwhelmed with fear and desperately screaming for help. Fortunately, the police arrived promptly, but the criminals escaped with approximately $40,000 worth of camera equipment. I informed Tony about the police alert, indicating that criminals are specifically targeting homes owned by Asian families, further highlighting the urgency of addressing these troubling incidents. The Asian hate crimes and everything was already hard to exist as an Asian in this community, and now it sounds even, even, even harder. In the beginning of this video, Two guys are sitting in their parked car, and they seem like they're watching something in the bushes ahead. <laughs> then a motorcycle goes by, and something surprising happens. <laughs> <laughs> they get really scared by what they see. They keep watching to make sure the tiger doesn't come back, and luckily for them, it doesn't. After reports of gunfire erupted at a gas station, a significant police presence became evident. The arrival of SWAT was particularly noteworthy, signifying the gravity of the situation. The window displayed a disconcerting sight with at least 25 bullet holes. We know at least 25 shots were fired. Indicating a substantial exchange of gunfire had transpired. The challenge at hand was determining the identity of the individuals responsible for the shootings. The people that were standing out front ran inside of the convenience store and the shooters still continued to fire shots. As soon as the police arrived, those involved in the shootings had rushed into the store, mingling among the innocent bystanders. While security cameras would ultimately aid in identifying the shooters, at the moment, no casualties had occurred despite the intense gunfire. Shortly before midnight, police were summoned to Gate 28 in response to a disturbance. A Spirit Airlines employee had been struck by a passenger. According to the police report, the passenger had requested a seat change on the flight and was informed that she would need to board the plane last after her seat was reassigned. What followed was an astonishing sequence of events. Body camera footage reveals the moment when the police arrived at the gate, finding the assailant, identified as Victoria Ramirez, awaiting just outside the plane's entrance, alongside the gate's agent she had assaulted, Yashira Garcia. 
The atmosphere was highly charged, with Garcia expressing her intentions to press charges against Ramirez. Ramirez was approached by the officer separate from the group, where she attempted to present her case passionately and articulate her point of view. That's a problem as a cop. The judge wants that. Uh, so don't judge my cop. Listen to me and let me show you. But I'm not lying. I'm going to show you everything that you have. I'm a cop. I'm a veteran. So I'm going to show you my paperwork and I'm going to show you she's lying. Don't judge one side. I'm pregnant. My husband was a sheriff in the army. I'm a sheriff myself. He's also a sheriff in Arkansas. Uh, I just came from Arkansas. Um. However, her credibility quickly eroded as she made a series of false claims, asserting at various points that she was a police officer, a veteran, pregnant, and even a sheriff. Subsequently, Ramirez was informed by officers that she would not be allowed to board the flight and needed to leave the gate with them. Ma'am, you're not gonna grab, you're not gonna fly, so uh... Ma'am, you're not gonna fly. Why? Why? Because they, they're not gonna allow it. Why? Why? Because they said so, it doesn't matter. We have to go but now. why? I'll pay for it. Ma'am? I'll pay for it. Driver's license, and we need to go now. All right, but I'll pay for it. If you do not do this, I do not want to put you in handcuffs. All right, but I'll pay for it. Understood. We can talk out there. We, we can, can talk, talk out there. there. Right? Thank you. Appreciate your, appreciate your cooperation, all right? Initially resistant, she eventually complied, albeit not without muttering what appeared to be a veiled threat to Garcia as she departed. As Ramirez exited the gate in the company of the police, onlookers waiting on board their flight began applauding, indicating her widespread unpopularity that evening. Amid ongoing taunts from the passengers and her resistance, officers were forced to physically escort Ramirez away from the gate to avoid further confrontation. Once they attempted to bring her to their office, Ramirez began loudly claiming to be experiencing a miscarriage, a claim that the officers did not believe. In an attempt to convince them, she even removed her pants. Oh my God! Oh my God! I'm in pain! Oh my God! Oh my God! <laughs> Further escalating the already embarrassing situation. Surprisingly, taking your pants off in front of the police is probably not going to benefit you. It took her several minutes to put her pants back on, and curiously, her previous pregnancy concerns seemed to have disappeared as she settled in to await her fate. Ramirez insisted that she would file a lawsuit, citing a device hidden in her hair supposedly recording everything. Major Peter about it is that I recorded everything. You don't even know that I've got in my hair that's recording everything, so I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. The confrontation persisted for several more minutes until an ambulance, previously requested by Ramirez, arrived. Her behavior became even more erratic and combative, and bafflingly, she refused the medical assistance she had requested. Forget about what I said right now. Right now, forget about my kid. Right now, we care about making justice. You don't play me, and you don't play me. You told me that I was lying. Victoria. You like, shut up, I'm not talking to you. Later, Ramirez began recounting the events of her night to the medical personnel and officers who had arrived. Her verbal abuse persisted, providing an opportunity for police to handcuff her. Finally in custody, Ramirez was placed in a wheelchair and transported out of the airport, where a police vehicle awaited to take her into custody. She ain't gotta get her flight. Really? Victoria, calm down. I heard you now. You said it to me. Okay. Okay. I'm not no, no, You're under arrest. Put her. Okay. Okay. You wanna know? You see that? You see that place? Make you. sure you. Uh, you see that place? See that place? Touch him. Just when it seemed that the ordeal was ending. Ramirez delayed the process further with some resistance. After some additional struggle, officers were able to get her into the vehicle. Throughout the entire journey, Ramirez continued to shout incessantly, 
she was ultimately charged with battery and disorderly conduct. Where am I going? Jail. Where? Are you from Illinois? Orange County, Orange County Jail. Where's Orange County? Where Orange County? Where's Orange County? But where am I going? Oh, I know. Jail. But where? Where is that at? Why? On September 22, 2019, the lifeless body of 15-year-old Chen Yin Lam, unclothed, was discovered adrift in the waters near Yao Tong, Hong Kong. An initial post-mortem examination revealed the absence of cuts, bruises, or any indication of external assault. Investigators suspected Chen's death was a suicide. After she went missing, Chen's body was quickly cremated, but what happened to her became a big mystery feeding many conspiracy theories. On September 19th, she got separated from her friends at Mao Fu Station in Hong Kong. She sent her friends a message saying she was going home, but then seemed to disappear without a trace. Her family told the police she was missing two days later. They found her phone and some school supplies on the ground at Kinlang Railway Station. Surveillance cameras showed her leaving the school and walking barefoot towards the nearby waterfront. Following the discovery of Chen's body, various theories started circulating on social media, suggesting that she might have been killed by government officials because of her support for and involvement in the 2019 Hong Kong protests. These protests were organized to oppose a bill that could have led to the extradition of Hong Kong residents to mainland China and other legal systems. It was reported that Chin had distributed protest flyers on one occasion, and her friends confirmed her presence at some of the demonstrations. On the internet, amateur investigators began speculating that police officers might have attacked Chen and disposed of her body in the sea. Chen's mother stated she believed her daughter committed suicide and may have even been suffering from psychosis. Chen had apparently confided in her mother about hearing voices and was facing challenges in her relationship with her incarcerated boyfriend. In early August, there was an incident at a train station where Chen appeared extremely distressed, reportedly due to issues related to her boyfriend. Concerned strangers and police officers surrounded her as she cried and yelled while sitting on the station floor. Due to her involvement in protests, Chen was sent to a juvenile detention center on August 12, 2019, and remained there until September 11. During her time there, she faced a charge of property damage for tearing up some papers. Additionally, she was expected to appear in court on September 20 for this charge, and was also facing a separate charge of assaulting police officers on September 26. This alleged assault had taken place at the Tong Fook Correctional Institution, where her boyfriend was incarcerated. Despite the challenges Chin was grappling with in the weeks leading up to her death, there were skeptics expressing their doubts on social media. Students at Chin's school demanded the release of the CCTV footage from the day she was last seen alive. Eventually, the school made 16 different video clips public, showing Chen moving around the campus for over an hour on September 19th. In the initial clips, Chen was still wearing her shoes, but she appeared to remove them after climbing a stairwell and descending barefoot. She was seen reading from some papers inside an elevator and seemed distracted and possibly upset as she wandered aimlessly around the school without a clear destination. On three occasions, she pressed the elevator call button, but wandered off before it arrived. In the final clip, Chin was observed walking outside, presumably towards the seaside. Some have suggested that the person in the CCTV footage might not be Chen, but an imposter or an actress involved in covering up her murder. Amateur investigators have pointed out differences in appearance, particularly in her eyebrows. When comparing the young woman in the videos to photos of her on social media and missing posters, it also raised suspicion that Chen's clothing went missing between the last time she was seen and the discovery of her body in the sea. Interestingly, Chen was known as a skilled swimmer, having won swimming awards in the past, which has led some to question the likelihood of her choosing to end her life by drowning. Despite the suspicions surrounding Chen's death, her family and close friends have positively identified her in the released video clips, and those closest to her appear to accept that she took her own life. Unfortunately, the full truth of what happened to Chen Yin Lam remains uncertain and may never be uncovered. Thanks for watching. Stay vigilant, friends.